Hello everyone, this is a new video where we'll be showing off some of the new features we just added to the latest version of SoundBridge. Now before we start, please like, subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video to YouTube. Now let me start by saying that most of the features we added are because you, the users, requested them. We tried to solve the most common problems the users had. So if I try to open a project that has any files missing in its project folder, I will get a dialog like this showing me all the files that are missing. And the bottom four right here, you can see those are actually found in the original location from where they were imported, but the top three are actually missing. So I can scan all my drives to find them. I can scan a specific folder to find them, or I can select a file to replace each one of those individually. And if I just click OK and some files are missing, they are going to be represented like this. So the files are missing, I can still right click and locate an individual file after the fact. Now let me go back to the example project and let me show you how we upgraded the crossfade feature. As per normal, I'm going to mark these two files, overlap them, merge them together and you can see that there is no initial crossfade happening right now. But I can control that from the sequencer. I can still double click, I can see that crossfade in the editor just like I could before. I can control it there and I can control some other aspects. Let me just take off the snap. So I can control the curve in between those two files. I can control the nature of the curves. But the best thing is you can control that from the actual sequencer like this, the length of the crossfade, the shape of the crossfade, everything is now controllable from the sequencer. If you select a specific audio block within that merge block, you get the most common audio controls for it from the audio editor. And one of my favorite features is that now you can copy files within the merge block. Drag and copy like this. I can use Control D to duplicate it, or I can copy and paste it elsewhere within that merge block. Another really nice upgrade was done to the multiple takes recording track list. First off, when you open the track list, you can see that all the takes you made are now marked with the number of the take actually. So it's much easier to identify which take it was when you're selecting one. You can also notice that if I remove a specific take, the rest of them retain their number. What's more, all the actual audio parameters that you set for any of the takes, like the pitch, the time stretch, the fades or the gain, they are all going to be shared in between all the takes. They will all share the same parameters. Another great new feature for the editor is if I click on a block in the sequencer, you can see that the entire length of that block is shown in the editor. So no longer do you have to zoom in or out. You will always see the entirety of the block you just clicked on. That goes for MIDI as well. You can see on this longer audio file, this greatly speeds up the workflow in SoundBridge. That being said, it was really important to us that everybody has a smooth experience using SoundBridge. So we added caching for audio waveforms. And what that means for you is that any scrolling, zooming in and out is going to be much smoother. Support for FLAC files was added, so now you can import and export in FLAC. A dialog was added to warn users if their project and sound card sample rates were mismatching. Matching these two sample rates is really important for a good recording experience. Also highly requested by a lot of our users was the feature to allow the simultaneous control of fade and gain parameters on multiple selected audio blocks, just like this. Another workflow feature, again this time a little bit more technical, is that any audio effect that can receive MIDI now has this MIDI chain feature. For an example, on an LFO tool, the plugin that can receive MIDI notes to re-trigger itself, I can use this MIDI chain feature to select a MIDI kick drum I have in this project. What is exceptional about this feature is that it resembles an audio sidechain feature, meaning that I can use the same MIDI information as a sidechain for more than one of these LFO tools. Notice this blue triangle in the top of that button as well that indicates that a sidechain was actually selected and we added such an indicator to the audio sidechain button as well. Another great improvement in our opinion was the optimization of how the instrument rack was presented. So in this latest update, the XY pad and the red parameters used for automation are no longer visible by default. So this new compact representation of each single effect allows users to have a better overview of their entire effects chain. While we are on the subject of the instant rack, we also added sidechain support for all the VST3 instruments that can accept audio sidechains. So just as an example, this vocoder V from Arturia can now accept 
audio sidechains. We have also addressed the biggest single problem our users had, SoundBridge encountering a plugin that made it crash on startup. This is no longer the case. Plugin scanning is done in a separate thread, which restarts on every problematic plugin. And once everything is done, a dialog pops up informing the user which plugins need to be added to the blacklist. What's more, we added an option to preferences where you can select if this scanning is going to happen before SoundBridge starts, so during the splash screen, or when SoundBridge already starts in the background. For the musicians, we added 14 additional metronome sounds so you can switch those up to break the monotony or help your metronome break through a different piece of music more easily. Also, you can change the volume of the metronome using this fader on the transport bar. These are only some of the new features we added to the latest update of SoundBridge. And if you want to see the full list, I will leave the link to the SoundBridge release notes page in the description of this video. Have fun using SoundBridge.